Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about information gain as a splitting criterion. In the previous video, we talked about the structure of the decision tree and also how entropy is calculated. Today we will be talking about how to use entropy to perform a split in the decision tree and create internal nodes. Information gain measures the randomness lost when we perform a split on any given node. Higher the randomness lost will mean more chances of getting a pure or near to pure nodes after splitting. This will mean that the decision tree is able to arrive at a decision. As we have explained previously, randomness is measured in terms of entropy and hence the information gain is the difference between the randomness of the parent node or the entropy of the parent node and the randomness of the child node or the entropy of the child nodes. If we create an entire decision tree by considering information gain as a criterion, the type of tree obtained is called as an ID3 tree or iterative dichotomizer 3 tree. We will consider a small numerical example and make an attempt to build an ID3 from it. As you can see, we have an example with three categorical values as features and the target is discrete. This means that we have a similar binary classification problem as we discussed in the previous video. Like the previous video, we will be computing the entropy of the entire data set first, which will mean that we will be computing the entropy corresponding to the target column. So there are two classes in the data set, uh, a positive class denoted by 1 and a negative class denoted by 0. We have nine observations uh, present in the data, out of which four are corresponding to the 0th class and five are corresponding to the class with value 1. So the uh, probabilities are computed as P0 and P1. And if we use the same entropy formula as we did previously in the first video, we will get the entropy corresponding to entire data set as 0 0.99108. So for the data having four negative classes and five positive classes, um, we have this entropy. Now we will try to calculate the entropy corresponding to each of the individual features, feature 1, 2, and 3. We consider feature 1 first. It has only two distinct values, true and false, out of which true has five occurrences and false has four occurrences. Now let me highlight the occurrences when feature 1 is actually true. So these are the occurrences when we can see that feature 1 is true. Now if we see out of all these 5 occurrences, the negative class has happened only once. Hence we write the probability as 1 by 5 while all the rest of the 4 occurrences are positive and hence we write the probability as 4 by 5. Similarly for feature 1 being false, the negative class happens three times and the positive class happens only once. We use the way to calculate entropy as we discussed in the previous video to attain the entropy as this which is 0.76. Now let's recall the definition of information gain. So information gain is nothing but the difference between the entropy corresponding to the parent node and the child node. We don't have a root node as of now we are in the process of selecting a root node and root node could be any one of the feature 1, feature 2 or feature 3. We will select a feature and then we split it and the consequent internal or leaf nodes will be calculated. But as of now we don't have a root node. So we will take advantage of the entropy which we calculated for the entire data set or the homogeneity present in the entire data set a step before which came out to be 0 0.99108 and the entropy which uh, we calculated just now to get the information gain corresponding to feature 1 as this. So as we have discussed higher the value of this information gain better it is because we will be tending more and more towards randomness, uh, more and more towards purity. We now consider feature 2 over here. It has again two distinct values, yes and no. And yes is having five occurrences, no is having four occurrences out of nine. Now what we can see is out of the five occurrences yes is having, let me mark them down over here. 
these are the five occurrences of years. Uh, three of them are actually negative, which is rightly pointed out over here. The probability is negative. These are the negative occurrences and the remaining two are positive. And this is rightly pointed out to be 2 by 5 over here. Similarly, for the scenario when feature 2 takes the value no or n, uh, the negative class is occurring only once and the positive class is occurring three times. So we use the same formula for calculating the entropy as we did it in the previous video and the overall entropy comes out to be like this. And again, since we don't have a root node, we follow the same procedure as we did for feature 1 to get the information gain as this. So we, will, we can see that the information gain corresponding to feature 2 is much less as compared to feature 1. We still have one feature left. We will calculate the information gain corresponding to feature 3 as well before arriving at a decision. We now consider feature 3. It has two distinct values A and B. Um, out of which 6 times A is occurring and only thrice B is occurring. So these are the instances when A occurs and the leftover instances are when B occurs. We follow the same way to calculate the probability 0, probability 1 corresponding to A and B. We calculate the overall entropy as this. Overall entropy corresponding to feature 3 as this. We follow the same argument as before as we did for calculating the information gain corresponding to feature 1 and 2 and conclude that the information gain corresponding to feature 3 is 0.07278. We see that the information gain corresponding to each of the individual feature comes out to be these. Um, the information gain corresponding to feature 1 is 0.22, feature 2 is 0 0.09 and feature 3 is 0 0.07. We can clearly see that the information gain corresponding to feature 1 is the highest. Which will mean that we can select feature 1 as our root node and split the data set accordingly. From the results obtained from information gain, we consider feature 1 as a root node. And feature 1 has two distinct values, true and false. And we subset the data set. This is the actual data set given to us into two subsets. One is D12. D12 happens only when feature 1 is completely false. So over here feature 2 and feature 3 have distinct values while feature 1 is having uh, all the values as false. So we can omit feature 1 from here. Um, and D11 uh, occurs when feature 1 is completely true. Uh, so feature 2 and feature 3 are having distinct values. We can see one pattern over here. We could have selected feature 2, feature 3 as a root node. If we had to apply a brute force algorithm. But since we did this split based on information gain. Even in the data set D11. We can see a pattern. Wherever the feature 3 is having value as A. The target is coming out to be 1. Likewise, whenever the... Uh, feature 2 is having a value of y in D12, the target is coming out to be 0. So we had a data set, a complete data set. We were able to select feature 1 intelligently and we used information gain uh, as a splitting criterion. And we were able to decompose the entire data set into two sub data sets, out of which we are able to see some distinct patterns which will help us in creating the eventual de decision tree. So this is the power of having information gain as a splitting criterion and for that matter having any other splitting criterion. Instead of applying brute force and trying out each and every attribute as a root node, we can pick up the root node as a feature which helps us in getting to a leaf node in minimal number of steps. Since we were able to decompose the data set into two subsets, we will take a step further to apply the exact same procedure individually in D11 and D12. We will consider D11 first 
and we'll try to find out the information gain corresponding to feature 2 and feature 3. There will be no point in considering the information gain for feature 1 because feature 1 is completely true and uh, it has only one value present only and we won't be splitting again on feature 1 because it's already been selected as a root node. The only features which will be concerning us are feature 2 and feature 3. We will be considering the information gain corresponding to both the feature and select which feature we should prefer for splitting. We consider the feature number 2 over here and feature number 2 again has two values yes and no. We perform the exact same steps to get the entropy corresponding to feature 2 as 0.55 and the overall information gain corresponding to feature 2 is 0.21 but there is one thing we should keep in mind as of now uh, the definition of information gain states that it's the difference between the entropy corresponding to the parent node and the child node initially while we were calculating the root node we were not having a parent node now since the root node is calculated we are able to consider feature 1 as the root node we have the entropy corresponding to root node so the entropy corresponding to root node was 0.76 which we calculated a step further so for all the uh, features in uh, the next step the parent node entropy is always 0.76163 which is the entropy corresponding to feature one and the entropy corresponding to feature one was with respect to the complete data set we considered feature 1, we split it into two parts and now we are trying to capture the information gain corresponding to each of the features, feature 2 and feature 3 with respect to feature 1 being the parent node. So we were able to get the entropy corresponding to feature 1, we have the entropy corresponding to the parent node. The information gain corresponding to feature 1 comes out to be 0.21. We consider feature 3 and the entropy corresponding to feature 3 we calculate using the same way as we did previously and the entropy over here comes out to be 0. So this is an important observation we see over here. Whenever the entropy is coming out to be 0, the randomness present in the data is 0 because entropy measures the randomness present in the data. This happens only when we encounter a leaf node. And this is pretty much obvious as we have explained a step further that whenever feature 3 is having value A, it takes value 1. Whenever it is value B, it takes 0. So the rules are pretty much clear over here. And hence, the entropy corresponding to the third feature in the data set D11 is 0. Now if we look at the information gain corresponding to feature 3 is 0.76163. We had the feature 1 as the root node and feature 3 as the child node and the information gain is this. So this is the entire randomness which we are losing if we perform a split on feature 3. In other words, we are performing a split on an attribute which is feature 3 and we are getting a pure node. We can repeat the same process for D12 over here and we consider the feature 2 for calculating the information gain and again feature 2 is uh, having two values yes and no and the entropy corresponding to feature 2 is coming out to be 0 for D12 data set of course uh, and the information gain is 0.76163 so what we can say that feature 2 over here is a pure node calculate the entropy corresponding to feature 3 as well. The entropy corresponding to feature 3 is 0.5 which will mean that this is still not a leaf node but we actually got a better result from feature 2. This we are calculating just to complete the process and the information gain is 0.26 which is much less than the information gain we obtained while we perform a split on feature 2 which was 0.76. Now this is the final decision tree we obtain on splitting the data set successively. So we started with a complete data set. We were able to decompose it on the basis of feature 1. We selected feature 1 as our root node 
and it had two values true and false we get two data sets d11 and d12 which served as a subset for the complete data set we applied the same formula for splitting on d11 this was uh, actually d11 and we were able to find out that feature 3 is having the highest information gain and feature 3 had two values a and b and it was able to distribute the data into two subsets and likewise for d12 uh, we had feature 2 as the splitting node and we were able to split the data set d12 based on two distinct values of feature 2 which is yes and no. This actually validates a claim which we actually got after splitting the data set on the basis of feature 1. So our intuition is very much in sync with the results which information gain provided and we were able to get a final decision so if we just remove the data set and look at the rules which will follow this is how the final decision tree will look like we will always check what the feature one values are whether it is true or false if it is true then it has to go to feature three and if it is false it has to check on feature two uh, if it is true and of uh, and if feature three is checked if feature three comes out to be a we need to output as a positive uh, scenario and if feature three is b we need to output as a negative scenario scenario Similarly, if feature 2 is having yes value, um, which happened because feature 1 was false previously, then the target will be 0, which is the negative. Um, and if feature 2 is having no value, which will happen, uh, the target will be positive. Let's consider the example where we have a data point whose values corresponding to each of the features is uh, feature 1 is taking a false value, feature 2 is taking a no value and feature 3 is B and we need to classify what the output is going to be. So we will follow the decision tree. We see that feature 1 takes a false value. We will take uh, the right child which is feature 2 over here and then we observe that feature 2 takes the value as N. So if it is taking the value as N, the output should be 1. We don't need to bother about feature 3 because feature 1 and feature 2 were if sufficient enough to give us a result. Feature 3 is not needed. Had feature 1 being too true, then feature 3 would have some role to play. But as of now, feature 1 was false. We just followed the path which is being given by the decision tree or the if-else rules to be more precise, laid down by decision tree and then we arrive at a conclusion. So feature 1 was false, we move to feature 2 and check what value feature 2 is taking. It was taking value as no and the eventual output was coming out to be 1 which is a positive scenario. So this data point we can classify as positive. So this is how the decision tree or more precisely the ID3 tree which uses information gain as a splitting criterion is used to perform a classification task. So that concludes the creation of an ID3 tree and hence it concludes our discussion around information gain. See you in next class.